you hear me? Yeah, nice. Okay. So, uh, thank you, TEDx, and thank you, Anandi Durgapur, for having me here. Uh, it's kind of stupid that you would call me amongst all these great speakers. So, let's start, and let me waste a little bit of your time. Okay, so this slide is basically to make sound intelligent so that you kind of understand that, you know, I'll not give you something very constructive. Okay, so uh, the thing is uh, that we as engineers, most of us are engineers, uh, we know that we are most safe when we are most drunk. So this, this is a drunk rat, right? This, this is what we say when we are really drunk and we get off philosophical about life and we find what we are going to do in life. So you must have seen this picture about a million times and uh, people ask rhetorical questions that who are you and you know you should stand out, you should, you know, you are different, you are unique. So uh, somebody, someone just mentioned that uh, 10 lakh people give IIT exams every year, right? Many of them become engineers, some from good colleges like NIT and others from bad colleges like mine, right? So, <laughs> so uh, the thing is that uh, we all have engineering backgrounds and we eventually land up in the same kind of companies, we are in the same cubicles, we are working on the same boards, and we all have no life or no girlfriends. <laughs> so it, it is very difficult to be different. You know, so uh, I was an engineer first, then a management uh, graduate and now a writer. So now all my friends are writers. So uh, when we go out, there are 50 of us and we are all writers and nobody is different. Right? So keep that pressure off of being different, just be yourself. <coughs> You know, this is the question we ask ourselves when we are dumb, when uh, we score bad marks, when our friends stop their exams and we, we are in, in the sidelines. So I have this question about a million times and I have not found an answer but the good part about me is uh, that I have stopped looking for anything. You know? So I was an average mechanical engineering student. You know? So uh, for engineering student, fifth semester or the sixth semester in some colleges, that is the most important semester of all. Because it's just before your placements and if you're hovering around 59% or 63, 64%, you kind of want to score your maximum and get into, get into you know, good uh, companies because their cutoffs are 60% or 65%. So I was hovering around uh, 63 so I started to nod right? I wanted to get to 65 So I locked myself in rooms and I started to nod and I scored a 52. So uh, quite quite this day I was doomed, you know. No company, no same company would pick me. You know, plus it's it's very you think you prepare yourself in front of a mirror for your interviews, but uh, even when take your interview, they're smart people, you can't fool them, and I cannot fool them. So um, my career was over, right? But I did find a very dumb interviewer to interview me and he took me in. So I worked in an engineering company for about eleven months. It's Siemens part, they make part plants. Right? So it was very dangerous for me to work there. So, so the thing was they took me and the people who were champions of thermodynamics and I was still wasn't getting my P1, V1 is going to be to me to write. So, so, so that's when I asked that this is not me, I am I meant for bigger things in life. So I moved on, I took my CAT exam and I went to a management school. Still a very average school. You know, I, I took a marketing because in marketing exams what you do is you just have to write from the minute your exam starts till it ends you know you can write anything you can write I did not go to a management school and people will not care because they weigh your answer sheets and they mark you according to that so I took a marketing and I thought I would do a good job at it because I was good at writing answers so uh, but I think, I think somebody read my answer sheets and I did not score well yeah so uh, the placement season came in again and uh, American Express one, was one of the first few companies that came into campus, right? For some reason people thought that, you know, this is not the best job opportunity, so they did not apply. I did because I was panicking. So uh, they had not reviewed their package as, as then. So when I got through, they, they said that we pay you X and we were like, Durjo is getting X. You know, we just committed the biggest mistake of our lives. So any, in any case, uh, I went to this company in a management cadre. We were uh, 20 students from premier B schools and bad B schools right, like mine. So we went there and we were put into management cadres and we had 20 people, strong team, which we had to lead. So for the next three months, I did not go home. 
you know, I saw this uh, boss of mine, he was 35 years of age, you know, he used to drive a big car, he used to dress up well, he used to be a hit amongst the ladies. I, I thought this is my future, this is exactly what I'm going to be like. So, you know, if, if I work hard enough, I'll be there. So, as you can see, they were quite happy. So, uh, three months of hard work, brilliant, brilliant proposals and jazzy presentations, not like this one. Uh, I did not go anywhere. You know, three months later, my that 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 brilliant boss of mine, he called me up in his room and said that no joy, uh, things are not working, and you know that's bad of him because it's either that you're fired or you'll be transferred to a department that is less jazzier, does not pay you money, and you know does not have a good gender ratio. So uh, you know, so he he told me that you know you take a week off, go back home and revisit your situation, right? And for, for myself, I was brilliant, but I uh, was not bad. While all this was happening, I was also writing, right? In 2008, final year, I was placed, right, with a good company, so I had lots of time for yeah. So I wrote my first book, it was, of course I loved it, right? It was a very cocky book, did not really make any sense, but I still wrote it. And after I finished it, uh, I sent it over to a few publishers and I asked them that I used to put it into publishing. So one of these guys had a, lot of, had a lot of money probably. He said, yes, I'll do it. So he did it and I sort of lost interest. Six months down the line, I thought, you know, this book will go out of print, but instead it showed up on the bestseller list. So I called up my publisher and uh, asked him, well, have you paid for this thing? He said, I, I might have a lot of money, but not as much. So, uh, you know, about three months later, I get, got my first uh, royalty check and I was definitely surprised because uh, all my friends were asking me how much I get paid to get published and here I was, you know, getting paid. So, I thought this, this is a good thing. So, what I did was I aimed at finish, finishing another book in one month. I just had to write 60,000 words and publish it, which I did. So, my second book is a really horrible book with 20,000 characters, confusing plot lines, and a terrible climax. <laughs> so, I hope you guys don't read it, but please buy it. <laughs> so, uh, the book came out, and I was looking for places to buy it, uh, but this book went on the bestseller charts as well. I don't know what people were thinking. <laughs> so, so, I realized that there is something that I do that, that I'm really bad at, but people somehow like it. So. You know, I thought that I'd make an alternate career of writing really bad books, but making them sell. So that is, that is what I started doing. Okay, so uh, my boss sent me home, right? Uh, and I talked to my friend who was in uh, a district in Karnataka, right? He was working in a steel plant and was not having any fun. And, you know, how much fun can you have in a steel plant? So he called me up and said, uh, what happened and I told him, so he was in HR, so he told me that you are going to get fired. So, and it would not look good on your resume. So, why don't you quit and make a business out of selling bad books? You know, you know what people like. So, I thought maybe you make, make sense. So, I get the phone down, two days later, he was at my house and he was typing my resignation letter. <laughs> Within seven weeks, we were, uh, seven days, sorry. We were out on the streets looking for printers and editors and sub-editors and mind you, these editors are very uh, egoistical people because we come from engineering backgrounds, we are supposed to not be good at writing books whereas these English honor students, they are, they are supposedly very good. So, we started looking for them and we found a few, few of them, not, not that they were any good, but we did. So, uh, we, started, we started working on Great Mind India which is which was our publishing house. And we came out with nine titles in about two months and they all worked very well. So, oh, by the way, I, that sounds like an oxymoron but that's that's what I am. Uh, I'm very lazy and when you think of an entrepreneur, you think of a guy who's uh, knocking on doors that never open and running from pillar to post, not making any money. The last part is true about me. So, so that's what I am. Thank you. So, I'm a lot of these things, but I'm not just one of them. You know, I, I, might, I might be average at every one of those aspects, but I do not run after any single thing. I realize that 
when people say, you know, uh, as this, uh, someone said right now that uh, Charlie Brown, when he grew up, uh, when somebody asked him, that, what do you want to do when you grow up? He said that, I want to be happy. So I am an average guy, but I'm extremely happy with what I do. Because since I'm so many things, if I'm a bad employee, it does not affect me because I'm, I'm probably good at something else. I heard somebody say in a talk some days before this that you have to be, you have to stop being one dimensional. And all of you are engineers and I'm telling you this, this will happen. I'm not scaring you, but four or five years down the line when you're still when they, you start working in research firms or engineering firms or management firms, your life will just revolve around your work, right? You, if there's an ex-person, you will be introduced as your ex and you work at this firm because there will be no other aspect in your life that you might have touched upon in the last so many years. <coughs> Fortunately enough, I was so bad at a few things that I listed below that I had to look for other things to do. So you have to realize that, that you don't have to get stuck to engineering. You know, uh, okay, I also play the guitar, you know, and people have known to kill themselves when I play, but that does not stop me from playing it. You know, uh, yeah. see, best is the enemy of it. After I wrote the first book, many people told me that, you know, you have potential, but you cannot do it without proper training. You know, you should, you should probably join a writing school. It was good advice probably because I wrote that books. But I do not I don't listen to them because I knew that I'll go to write this school, spend two years and then come out with a book which might not be good enough. You know, so there are a lot of people that that you know that are who are closet singers, who are you know closet musicians, who do not come out because they have the fear that they are not good enough. You know, like I have a fear of public speaking, I have a crippling fear of public speaking. So I hope Koshik that will help me. So the thing is that you have to stop thinking about what other people do. You know, think about what you do. You might be bad, but what, what's the worst that will happen? You know, you, you might lose a few friends, right? Successful, you okay, where's one sorry? So it's okay to be confused as long as you're having fun with it. You know, you, you, you should be, okay, I should not say this because I have heard speakers who are doing things for other people, but you have to be selfish, man. You have to look after your own happiness. And this is the time you can do that. You know, you're 21, 22. After that, you'll have kids, you'll get married. Can life get any worse? <laughs> so yes, uh, I don't know how many people have uh, seen this movie, but there's a movie called The Yes Man. It starred uh, Jim Carrey. So Jim Carrey is a very boring banker who is very pessimistic about life. He says most of, not a lot of things. So he goes to a conference and where they tell him that you have to start saying yes and he does that and it's, it's about his transformation about how he ends up doing a lot of interesting things. Now think about something, if, if you were to transport yourself out of your body and think what you did today, would it make an interesting, would it, would it make it an interesting script for a movie or, or a book? Is your life interesting enough? See my life was interesting, interesting enough at all. So I tried this out and I ended doing a lot of silly things and a lot of interesting things. I met a lot of people that I would not have met had I you know, kept saying no to things. There were very, there were conferences like these where people like boring, as boring as me used to speak but I used to sit through because I said yes I'll go, to, go there. So you have to, you have to take your life a little less seriously. You know, you have to explore the kind of dimensions you can go in. You know, if you are an engineer, it does not mean that you are an engineer alone. You can be a very bad author like me and you can sell a million copies. What's, what, what's the harm in that? Okay, this is, this is the slide where I piss off professors. So I think you can see this. Okay, so, uh, okay, that's enough okay. uh, so, so, basically, uh, my talk here is to, is to just put across a point that don't be restricted by what other people say because if, if you are 21 year old, if the person who is telling you that you are not good at this is 21 years old too and he probably does not know anything about what he is doing. So go out, have fun, do a lot of interesting things and game up. <laughs>